What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch. Great to have you back. Now, there's been a ton of controversy going on about the new .zip and .mov top-level domains. They haven't even been around for that long, and already hackers are taking advantage of some very, very obvious attack vectors. So I thought that would make an absolutely perfect topic for the latest episode of Epic Exploits. Although technically these have been available since 2014, they've just recently been available to make them, you know, open to the public to actually purchase them. Now, specifically the .zip and the .mov, because those are very, very common file extensions. These are the ones that are causing the most trouble throughout the entire ecosystem of the internet right now. So I guess that begs the question, what makes this so dangerous? The actual trick behind it is being able to hide these domains in effectively a normal looking URL. The way that's done is using the U2215 Unicode backslash. It looks nearly identical in most fonts to a traditional backslash. So if we pair that with a really simple login style URL with the username colon password at whatever the URL.com is, we can use that to basically make it look like that you're going to a different domain, but the URL is being parsed through the browser as kind of a login. So it won't really work the way you think it is. So it makes it really easy to exploit a URL through an email or through anything else. But let me show you how it works. So here's a great example of a really simple phishing email. I actually registered squatch.zip a for the sake of you know showing off how this all works and you know i want to make it into a url shortening service and some other stuff i just like having domains so squatch.zip i own and this link while it looks like a github link however when we click on it it takes us to a github login now what you'll notice about this is actually the url is just squatch.zip now I could make that much longer. I could try to hide things in there to make it look a little bit more real. But for the sake of argument on this one, I didn't feel like there was any real need to make it overly fancy. Now, obviously I could easily set this up for any you know fake login page. And as soon as you enter your credentials in it, it will steal the credentials for you. So yeah, you can see how this is a pretty, pretty easy thing to set up. And it would be very easy for some people to get fooled by it. So obviously that leads us to our next question, which is how does it work? So let's open up Notepad right here and you can see a real URL and you can see a fake URL. So you can see the real URL on top has the correct backslashes where the one on the bottom has fake backslashes. And the way it works is basically everything that comes before the at sign on this is basically read by the browser as login credentials. So it more or less disregards all that when you're going to this fake URL. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh, that would be so obvious. I, you know, I noticed that immediately, but it's not all about people that are in kind of the cybersecurity spheres. This is about someone's grandmother. This is about your mom logging in and looks like somebody that she knows sent a file. It's really, really easy for people who aren't tech savvy to get caught up in these things. Furthermore, I could even go ahead, pull up our email again, and I can set this up so that it actually just goes ahead and downloads a file. So I can do that right there and then boom, you're downloading a file. So it's actually, you know, it's, it's a really good way to fool people if they're really not paying close attention. There's one more level to this, which really makes things kind of scary when it comes to these domains, is that if I pull up our browser here and check out YouTube, YouTube has already implemented this. If I scroll down and see my comment here, squatch.zip, I just typed in squatch.zip, no HTTP, nothing. That just shows up as a link right there. Now, not only is this a little bit kind of concerning, also they're doing this retroactively. So if anybody had posted a link in the past to, you know, a file names, like there are a whole bunch of really malicious files out there like zip bombs, and somebody might actually have the name of a zip bomb written in a comment and then somebody may register that domain so if anybody clicks that they'll actually be downloading that actual zip bomb so yeah it's actually that's another way that you could really get in trouble with these things it's to the point where some of those zip bombs are so dangerous that just the act of downloading the file your antivirus might actually scan that and run that and then you could have that zip bomb actually affect your computer so that's really just a brief once over of some of the exploits you can pull off 
with these new .zip and .mov top level domains. Now, keep in mind, hackers are super clever. They're gonna keep coming up with different ways, different exploits, different ways of tricking you to click on their malicious links. I also went through and started checking out some of the other uh, domains that I could register. Things like nudes.zip, well, n00dz.zip, um, don'twatch.mov. There's so many like really, really enticing things that you could get people to click on and get people to download. So yeah, it's kind of the wild west as far as these domains go. Thank you so much for watching. If you happen to find an epic exploit, hit me up on any of my social medias. Definitely Discord is the easiest way to get a hold of me. I'm super accessible. But again, I can't thank you enough. I really like this new topic, and I'm going to try to make more and more of these videos. So, you know, check back as often as possible. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll keep them coming. All right, thanks a lot. Take it easy.